All righty, Ella Langley, finally get to meet you sort of via <laughs> Zoom, but we were just looking actually, it's crazy. Our first blog about you was in 2018. That's which, so wild. Yeah, it's crazy. It was, uh, Wes posted, a, he did a Tyler Chiller's cover of Nose on the Grindstone. Um, mm -hmm. The journey from that point to now, we'll get into, but overall, if you want to, I think fans, it's really interesting reading your bio, kind of how you got started. You were in school, you're going to Auburn. But then when did the music thing really seem like a a, a reality? Like, oh, wait, no, this is something I'm actually going to go pursue versus go get the nine to five type of thing. Uh, Well, to be completely honest, this is what I've wanted to pursue forever. Um, I think this is just I mean, I don't remember a day thinking I wasn't going to somehow do music. I just didn't honestly know what that was going to look like. Um, this has just always been what I've wanted to do. I've never, ever wanted the nine to five. I think I just went to college because, you know, that was the next thing for me to do. And, um, so, I mean, I've been singing as I mean, before I could even talk, I mean, I've been playing at church, every family reunion, anytime I had a guitar, my parents, my mom's parent, my dad's parents are just super musically inclined. So like every time we were around them, it's just music constantly. And so, um, when I went to Auburn, I think that's when I saw the change a little bit. I started to do those covers and y'all shared them, which was like, what? You know what I mean? It was so cool. Uh, and that's kind of where I started to like, all right, I'm getting a little bit of traction. You know, it started from playing a restaurant gigs to can you turn the drum set down? It's like, oh, we can't <laughs> can turn it off. We can quit playing, you know, going from, you know, being at Auburn and then doing those restaurant gigs to then kind of getting in the college bar scene of what that looks like. And I had a band and we were just kind of running that, the, you know, Southeast of playing all the college bar markets, you know, and my roommates, Trey Lewis. And uh, that's how we met uh, just playing all those shows and then moving to Nashville. I was like, I was in, I was in Auburn and it was, I just, you know, the next step for me was I played all the shows. I have the band, you know, I, I want to learn how to write songs. I want to, I want to be able to sing my stuff. I don't want to do covers anymore. And I'm grateful for those years of doing the covers because I don't think I could put on a show I, the way I do now without the what putting on a show back then, Cause, you know, putting on a show for people that don't care and getting them to listen is a lot different than putting on a show for people that already know the words, you know? And, uh, so going from covers to then move to Nashville, kind of backtracking a little bit to, all right, I stopped playing shows for a second and just figured out the writing thing. I met some really amazing people right when I moved here. I moved in August of 2019, dropped out of school, moved right here. COVID hit six months after that. I mean, and I couldn't play shows anymore. That This has legitimately been the only job I've ever had. I mean, straight out of high school, that's how I was making my money is playing shows. So the only thing I could focus on was writing songs. And I mean, what a better town to be in than this one, you know, and the best special be stuck here. You can't go anywhere. can't do anything. And luckily I had made some really good friends that were working really hard and young writers. No one had been signed yet, but everyone was just hustling. And uh, through COVID, I just kind of found my voice as a writer and figured that out. So when COVID ended and I'd kind of figured out writing for myself and what that looks like. And I got the, I had the, I played the shows or, you know, the, the cover gig shows and then some smaller opening stuff. And that's, I don't know. It's just some days I'm like, I, I think I'm just tricking everybody, you know, like I'm just tricking everyone. Like I can do it. You know what I mean? But it's just, I don't know if I've ever had expectations. It's more just been like this, this is what I'm going to do, you know, whatever that looks like in a way. And, the way it's worked out has been super amazing and incredible to watch and all the it's just really cool to see like all the times that were so trying and all the stops how much that led to so many open doors for me too and especially you know companies like you guys and 65 south they're a huge help for me as well just you know pushing my stuff as a young artist I mean those were covers you know I was doing up just trying to get a little bit of attention trying to help social media anything that I could do so I don't know if I've ever had expectations on it but I'm definitely amazed every day about what's happening yeah I feel like that no plan b mentality is kind of yeah. the way that's kind of the way we've approached this I think that's the way a lot of artists like 
if you really want to succeed, you kind of can't have a backup plan because it's obviously yeah. going to be really hard. And there's a lot of like moments where you're like, ah, should I quit? Is this for me? Should I just go do something else? Like, did you, did you have any moments like that in the last, you know, four Never. or five years or so? I, there, I think it's just a part of who I am. So it's like, if I quit doing this, then I don't, I don't know how to explain that. That's just what I do. This is, there is no plan B. There's never been a plan B. If, if for some reason I lost every deal that I have, I'd still be out there playing shows. I'd, I'd figure something else out and a way to do this job. And Lainey Wilson said something really amazing last night. And she said, if you want to be a dreamer, you got to be a doer. And that is just the God honest truth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch, did you watch the whole show? Did I didn't watch the whole show. I kind of watched the highlights of it. We were at yeah, the last the, night. That's the, that's the way to do it. Um, we're, we're known for, uh, we tweet the CMAs and the AC, we live, live tweet the ACMs and the CMAs and it's nobody's safe, so to speak. When <laughs> our, our biggest, we love when people tweet at us are like, I don't care about this show, but I want to like pay attention to what we're tweeting. Yeah. Um, Cause it gets kind of weird, right? It's like, I don't know like justin moore we we did was i don't know if that was on our podcast was or was it on his but you talking about like some of the like some of the like some of the ratings and stuff like have gone down over time and he was just like well maybe if there was like country artists on there like it would it would yeah maybe the ratings would be a little better so i just the whole like production of it gets a little weird and we went to the cma awards like years ago the only time we ever did the whole like thing and to dress up and I think it's so much less glamorous when you actually are there yeah you're like in a tent that these guys put together for like in like a couple hours yeah. and then you're just kind of like standing around you're like when you watch it on like tv or the red carpet or you're like oh this looks so extravagant you're like no it's kind of not at all yeah. and then when you get into the stadium or wherever it is you're you're like oh there's like half the seats are empty. like what and then there's like a guy in the intercom like sit down and da, da, da. you're like this is weird like it's just like a weird thing yeah. it's just like, seat like of course it's cool if you get in the future you win them and stuff but i think i i even think like zach bryant tweets something he's like oh he appreciates that he won uh what a male a new artist but yep. it's like you're not in it to win awards like if you're like focused on the money at the end of like your business or the awards, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way, I think. So you just focus on the craft, right? Is that kind of how you go about it? Yeah, I well, think that and something I've really, really been focusing on this past year, because, you know, this is, and, and y'all know, and I mean, this job is just hard. It's a lot of self-reflection and, you know, everything I turn in every day, I'm writing constantly and I'm turning songs or content or something. And that's getting judged every single day. Everything that I do is getting judged by multiple people a day, you know? And mm -hmm. for me, what I focus on is the songs and the music and which is the same thing, but you know, the, the message behind those and what I can handle and what I control. And that is, which is what I write and, you know, my message as an artist and focusing on that, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in all of the, the awards and the things that you're striving for. And of course, like those things are incredible. And so, and, and that, and like Lainey went in that and Zach, you know what I mean? Like, that's just so cool to watch because they do deserve it, but I don't, that's not why they're doing it, you know, the, and that's not, and I think people that do, and there are people that do obviously, you know, but for me, if I were to focus on that, then you're kind of banking a lot on other people's opinion um, on your own career and what you do. And at the end of the day, like, I just have to believe in what I'm doing and the songs that I'm putting out and hope that it reaches the right people. And, and all I want to do genuinely is I want to write songs and sing them for people that know the words. You know what I mean? I want to make mm -hmm. fans that I can go sell out shows and and have that relationship. And that's what's important what? to me. Also, like, okay, I get it's cool if like you have your office at your house and you won some awards, you like the trophy on it. Mm -hmm. But it's not like you're winning Top Chef and they're giving you a check for like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Congratulations, you won. It's like there's an award. How did I win it? Why did I win it? Who voted? How do they vote? What politics were involved? What yeah. this and that? What what are the labels doing? So it's like it's just like there's so many artists that are probably quote unquote like more successful in terms of awards. When you look at other artists who don't really even get played on the radio and their numbers streaming or the tickets that they sell out or it's like, that's what matters. Like yeah. the grassroots I mean, that following. Is, 
that's um so one of my managers his name is bradley jordan he um his company is called peach tree entertainment and they do a lot of the booking over the southeast and stuff and um you know tickets and the, that is what matters is fans is how many tickets you can sell because you see so many people that have you know that win all these awards but can't sell they can't music as much you know what i mean and to me it's not about that to me i want people to listen to the music it's you know what i mean i'm not doing this for validation i'm doing it because i have to i'm doing it because it's who i am and it's what i genuinely have to do if i did if i didn't do this and i literally just probably i'm probably dead <laughs> that's just how it is you know Do you still work some uh covers into the set these days Still work some covers in the set. We just, uh, we added a couple new ones in there. We added in, uh, I always try to add in some fun ones because I do feel like um, my music has a little couple different vibes in it. And uh, so I try to bring that out in the covers. We just added in Misery Business Paramore. And when I say that song is so much fun to play, <laughs> you know, we still here for the Wait, so isn't that, was Didn't you have that phase? Is that, you know, Paramore, what, I may not know the exact style it's yeah, kind of like, like alternative a, rock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punk yeah. Band. Mm -hmm. Like uh, West was in that. West had West had a phase. West had a phase. <laughs> yeah, we still added some covers, but I mean, it is something. There's something to it that it's a long road to get to writing your own songs and finding that sound, and then you know, it takes a lot of work to get there. But you know, I'm just now seeing. I just did a headlining show the other day, and it wasn't packed in there, but. You know, everyone in there was singing the words that I of the songs I had out. To me, that was just like the coolest thing ever. You know, mm -hmm. it is that is all that matters to me. Right. And and speaking of songwriting, you have a ton of cuts on L King's new record. Yeah. How did that kind of how did that kind of come about? Because that was a pretty I don't think people necessarily saw that coming from her, like doing a full country project. And then when it actually came out, it was really damn good. I feel mm -hmm. like people are like, holy shit, like. L. And King, nobody Rob Schneider's daughter. Yeah. Oh, I was you got it, Wes. I was like, everybody freaks out when they find that out. Like they're like, wait, what? We were on the bus riding. Whenever we we're on the bus riding, he called and it's like said dad on there. And we, we were all like, <laughs> uh so I, how that happened is is um so right now when I'm in these writing rooms, most of the time I'm writing for me. Uh, I would say about 95% of these writes I'm doing it for me. And then sometimes I'll go in and write for other artists and if they're good friends of mine and I just really believe in what they're doing. And, but a lot of the songs that are, are how out yonder happened. And that's the reason how we got um, to write with Elle is that's a song that I wrote for me, Matt McKinney, Bobby Hamrick all went in that day, wrote it for me. And I love that song. I genuinely do. Um, but at that time I was still figuring out what kind of music I wanted to put out, you know, what songs were right. And, I didn't know if that was the one that I wanted to be on the first project yet. And um, Sony, my publisher, my publishing, um, were like, well, can we pitch it to L. King? And I was like, that is the perfect person to pitch that song to. It's like somehow written for her. And uh, she cut it. And then a couple months later, we went out on the bus. We actually wrote five songs in a day and a half. It's not, not a full day because she had show that night. And so we kind of had the afternoon and then we had like the next morning a little bit. And um she just, she fell in love with that song. She fell in love with what we were saying in it. And she just was like, bring them out here. And we ended up getting, we got Tulsa, Bonafide, Ohio, Lucky. And uh, we actually wrote one more that didn't make it. It's called Banjo Slinging Baby. Uh, that was on there. Um, and I don't know, it's kind of, it's just cool. It's just genuinely like, you know, I, I also love being a songwriter. It's something I've fallen in love with. So to have an artist like L, I played X's nose in my cover set for years, all those years. I was like number one in my, I would start off my sets with that. So just her cut in the one song was cool. And then we've become really good friends. And I don't know, the whole thing, it's just been crazy and cool and exciting to see how it's doing for her. And to have my name on there as a songwriter and not just an artist is something so special to me. Um, but uh, funny, uh, Tulsa, Tulsa. So that was like my, when I, so songwriters in town had this thing called a hook book, um, kind of where it's like, so it's either on your notes app. I keep mine in Google docs. Cause one time the notes app deleted everything I've ever written on there and I will never put anything in notes app again. But, um, so it was my number one in my new Google docs thing. It was like the first year I lived here and I was like scrolling through Twitter or something. And I saw that Tulsa spelled backwards as a slut. 
And I was like, that's phenomenal. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to write this. I think I tried to write it in like five writes before that, that year. And I was like, come on, this would be hilarious. No one could like wrap their brain around it. And um, I don't know why that morning we woke up on the bus and I was like going through my titles or whatever. And I it was number one on there. And I was like, hey, guys. I know this kind of far out there, but Elle's kind of far out there, <laughs> and I feel like she would like this, and we kind of wrote a little bit of the course and showed it to her, and she was like, hell yeah, so. That's incredible. I, I like, typed it in just to, like, look at it in reverse. It's just, that's not how. <laughs> it's so funny. I, the funny thing is, is when she explains it from me saying it, because obviously I have an accent, but she just really sends it with it. You know what I mean? She's like, well, Al Langley came out there and it's like Tulsa spelled backwards is a slut, which is probably pretty accurate how it sounds. I feel like maybe, but anyways, yes, yeah, it's it great. And then Lucky, I, I mean, <clears throat> Lucky was a really special one to write with her. Um, that one kind of just fell out. I don't think any of us had that title. Um, I don't, I think we wrote a lot of the song without a title to be completely honest. And then it just, we didn't try to write it a better song. It just kind of came out that way. And it is turned into such a special song. And Ohio, actually, we wrote, we were done writing. We were, had gotten four of the songs. We were like, all right, we're great with four songs. That's more than we needed. You know, we're excited if she cut one off that weekend. Um, and then the last 30 minutes, like I was just kind of sitting there, you know, maybe had a left-hand cigarette before. And I was, you know, just vibing on my guitar, listening to Elle talking. And she's like, what are you playing? And I was like, I don't know. And we just sat down and she's like, I want to write a song about Ohio. And it just kind of came out that way. So now all the songs were really cool how it happened. It was very organic. And she yeah, I was going to, I was going to say like some of the stories we hear about, like the, the whole writing, um, the way it's like some people do where it's like, you know, some artists are like, I only write with these couple people or, or others are like, yeah, I'll just go in her room and I meet you for the first time and we get together and, I feel like that is as a creative person, like obviously like with Whiskey River is all a creative idea that like became something. It's like, I can't imagine not knowing people going into a room and then just being like, everybody shake hands and start thinking of a song. Yeah. And you're in here from 12 to three and then, and then somebody else is coming in. It's like, is you use the word organic and I, I feel like that's much more your style like have you ever been put in that situation where yeah that's, that, that, and, and, but that's forced much, that's kind of how um that's kind of how Nashville is and that's why they call it the song machine town because that's how rights work it's funny I wrote with Co um a little while ago and it was in Nashville and there was a co-write we set up and I was kind of talking to him about this and I've talked to other people that live in LA or, you know, Nashville does it differently than anyone else, you know, because you do, you go into the right. There's, I go into rights every week where I've never met that person. And especially when I first started out, when I first signed my publishing deal, I didn't know anyone. No one knew me. I was like playing them some songs in the beginning. Like that's what it sound like, you know? Um, I think it's just, it's, um it's like a muscle. Like you learn how to write that way, you know, and it, it, that just becomes how you write, you know? And then, and then you kind of figure out through, the way I the way I explain it is is you kind of got to start out that way. If you want to write in Nashville, you don't have to. You don't have to start out that way. But the way I did it was as I did that, I I figured out how this town worked in that way. I went into every room and and brought in the best ideas I could bring, and you know met everyone I could meet. And now that I've done that for you know I've almost had a publishing deal for I don't know two two years two and a half years. Um, I've gotten my people now where I'm like all right, these are the people I'm getting songs with every single time. And you kind of have to do that to find your people. You know, when you don't move here, just knowing your best co-writers, you kind of have to write with a lot of people to find those people that understand what you're saying and can say it the way you want it to, you know? Um, and that's just the trial and error. And, and there is something magical about going into a room though, and not knowing anybody and then getting a song that day that is like, Oh my God, what did we just do today? So it's just kind of how Nashville works. I don't, I don't think it's good or bad. I think it's just the way it is, you know, and I personally, it's, it's a muscle that's flexed every day for me. You know, it's repetition. Nashville's very big on repetition and everyone writes differently. There's not a wrong or right way to do it. You know what I mean? Zach Bryan writes all of his songs by himself. That's, you know, that's, that's how he writes, you know, some people all write all co-writes, you know, that's how they write. It's just such a songwriting is a hard, weird job and it's like you can't even really explain it but 
you know. It's funny when you were talking, I I was like, the Zach thing for sure. Um, but I was like, I thought Alan Jackson's last album, uh, Where Have You Gone? I was like, and if you actually go to it on Wikipedia, it's like, it's back listing. Every song written by Alan Jackson, except where noted. So it's like, they usually don't use that wording. It's like, some people do it. Like, I mean, he's my all-time favorite too, but it's like, he just sits there and he writes. I've heard him stories of like how he does it. And it's like, everybody has their own kind of way, right? Um, of, of doing it. There's no right or wrong way, but that's interesting. Yeah. Have you ever had like a disastrous situation where you're just like, oh my God. I feel like it's weird. It's like, you're supposed to come out with some, like something. Yeah. I'm like, it's just like, holy shit. It yeah. is like speed oh. dating. It's funny because like, it's, I was just talk, talking about this last night. Somebody came up and they're like, oh, we wrote like two years ago. And I was like, oh yeah. Because, you know, sometimes <laughs> you go in a room with somebody for three hours and then you don't see him again for two years, you know? Um, and it's funny. You've spent so much time with him in a room. I always say the songwriters in this town know way too much about me, way too much about me, but I, it's just how I write. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's one songwriter that has been like, I haven't had a disaster. Disa I wouldn't say disastrous, but some days, you know, the, it's not, the vibes aren't right or What's your like, styles are different. You know, it's just trial and error. Like I, I mean, it's just people are humans, right? You go to the grocery store, you you get annoyed by human behavior, potentially. Yeah. Oh, I don't like how this person's acting in, in, in my checkout lane. Yeah. What if that's that person that you're writing with and this person comes in, you're like, well, I would never want to hang out with this person ever. Well, you don't you know, have to, it's like, but that's the thing too. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you got to get through it. You got to get through it. And then, and then it's like, yeah. And it's not like you always have to get a song. I don't put that pressure in there. I just really go in the room and, you know, I, there, are, you know, I get a lot of questions like, what do you need? What songs do you need? And at this point, like I've just been writing for song. I have a little bit of everything. And it's like, I, my, my answer is just the best song we can get today. I don't put this huge, enormous amount of pressure. It's like, Oh, we have to write a hit song today. Cause that's just, you can't guess that that's, that is to write a hit song to, or whatever you classify a hit song is, is it's almost like, winning the lottery in a way you know what I mean you've got to be mm -hmm. the room is got to everyone gets along in the room the right idea comes in and everyone has the same idea of how the song needs to be written and that happens a lot but then you know you have some days where you don't write the same as somebody else and and you just you know end up not getting a song that day and that's fine there's mm -hmm. plenty of people that I love as human beings that I don't write well with and that's just you know everyone's brain's different you know no one ever not everyone colors inside the lines and not everyone colors outside you know yeah do you have any i'm looking at some of the posts we've done from day one on the site right now um whiskey myers some of our favorite guys ever they treated us better than anybody ever has honestly and obviously an amazing band so you, you did the cover of stone what year did we post that they shared that i remember oh, yeah. they shared that post of y'all's and i was like ah, like freaky I'm speaking of writing when you talk about writing to me, like some of their songs like that one, um, I mean, come on. Right. It's just like, is that more your style? Like where you kind of want to like, you did a lot of heavy cover from Cody Jinx. You did um, obviously Childers. Is that more what you're listening to, to kind of get inspiration at times versus, you know, maybe what's played on the radio on mainstream? Well, <clears throat> I, those are just good songs. And I like to just sing, you know, those are just good songs. Um, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to take inspiration from other people. And there's, you know, some days I'm listening to nineties country the whole way to the right. And I walk into the right and I'm like, I want to write this, this feeling today. I want, I want the end of the song to slowly fade out at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like that kind of energy, you know, if I'm listening to Jody Messina one day and I'm like, yeah, I want to tell that MF or what's up today. You know what I mean? And then some days I'm, <laughs> listening to Maroon 5 and I want to write something a little more like funky you know what I mean and that I don't yeah I mean I don't know I listen to so many different kinds of music it's honestly ridiculous I I my um photographer laughs at me because I don't have any playlists on my Spotify I just think of the song I want to listen to and then I type it in and then listen to well, it mine's all mine is I don't know Wes about you you but mine is all over when they come out with the end of year yeah you know it's like here's your top half of mine are it's like chakra music it, it like 
working like meditation music and then it's like here's a 90s song that you got really into like down at the twisted show yeah. and then it, here's a random like whatever <laughs> yeah, have, you, then... have you tried the dj thing yet where they like show you old songs that you've been listening to oh no what is that is it, that it's so cool so uh on days that i do not have any idea what i want to listen to on spotify they start this thing where it's like a it's like all the songs you've ever really listened to they obviously keep track of that and what you listen to in playlist or whatever. And it goes through like, and it was bringing up old songs. I'm like, I forgot about this song, you know? Um, I don't know. So my mom is from Michigan and my dad's from Alabama. Like the musical influences from just them two growing up are like so polar opposite. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of the household I grew up in. You know, they're polar well, opposite what, human beings. Was it what was one more country and one yeah, more? Yeah, so my dad was very. My dad liked also a lot of like eighties hair band stuff. Mm -hmm. He loved like obviously. I love know, Bon Jovi. He, bon like, Jovi. I have very vivid memories of me doing the dishes. I like Bon Jovi was like my guy back in the day. Like I'm like I'm putting on <laughs> show right now, you know. Uh, but yeah, she was like Pearl Jam, Peter Paul and Mary, Depeche Mode. Uh. Was, like cool parents. My dad was more like Hank Williams and Merle Haggard and 38 Special and Leonard Skinner and you know those all of those coming mm -hmm. from so many different places. You know, I've just been surrounded by different kinds of music my whole life. Awesome. Mm -hmm. New or new EP coming out. Is that it's gonna be your debut on the label? Yep. Lead debut. single with Co Wetzel. Can you tell us a little bit about the project and then kind of how that song came together? If that's yeah. going to kind of how, how that's going to set the table for the EP. So um, with Co, so we <clears throat> funny enough, we were talking about listening to the way on the ride. I think I was listening to Nickelback on the way to the right the whole time uh, <laughs> this day. And I remember I walked in and we're I, not as bad as people say. I don't like, hate Nickelback get that, at all. We got to get that out. We got to get this out there. They this whole thing about hating Nickelback. It's like, bro, it slaps. Come on. It's just like, come, come on. on. Shaking hands. That song's fired. All right. Sorry, but uh, so I walked in and I was like, I want to write a rock song today. I mean, the stuff I play rock stuff on stage, like I move around, like I'm running, like like practicing to Bon Jovi to my dogs back in the day. You know what I mean? Like I've always <laughs> wanted to do a little bit of rock stuff. Um, we went in and wrote that song that day. We got it done. And, and honestly, I had no future intention on it. And then uh, I brought it, I, we got the demo back and my roommate, Trey, um, we were listening to it and he stopped it after the first chorus. So I was like, what the hell? And he was like, dude, he was like, you should see if Co would sing on this. And I was like, that's a phenomenal idea. So we wrote that. That easy. The fall. <laughs> and I was like, I've got to go about this the right way. And uh, so <clears throat> I got it mastered and everything. We had it done, um, ready to go. But And I wanted it to sound like as most badass as it could possibly sound before I sent it to him. And uh, because, you know, he could have been like, that's ah, not my vibe or whatever. And then we were just going to put it out, just me. Uh, but I sent it to him and I just straight up cold turkey text it to him. I was like, hey, you could hate this and not want to do it, but you could also love it. And if you wanted to sing on this, it'd be sick. Um, and his response with was that shit slaps. And <laughs> and then uh, he came to Nashville like a. That was about right. And he put his vocals on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's cool because, you know, I met Co back when I was living in Auburn. Um, he played a show down there. This is when his TM was still his drummer. Uh, and so, like, we've just kind of known each other for a long time. And then last year I toured with him a good bit. We, I mean, the BOK Center we did last year was, like, probably one of my biggest shows I've done. That place was insane. That I'll never forget that show. Um, and they've just always been like brothers to me. I don't know. They've just supported me. They really believe in me. Um, and He's awesome. Co yeah. was like, you know. Co, Co is, I mean, y'all know him, you know, he he's somebody that ain't afraid to speak his opinion and has very strong. He's so humble, but he's like, so like, we've said this a bunch of times about him, I, th I think less, but it's like, he sells more, more tickets than so many guys that are getting number ones on like mainstream country radio. And he, he's crushing it, whether it's streams or that or tickets, whatever, but it's like, and he's got the whole party person it's like that's him like he's just a rock star like he really is he really is a rock star like the, I can, but then he's I like the sweetest from the green room to prove it <laughs> he's like the sweetest guy if you like just hang yeah. out with them like before all that shit starts because yeah. like what's and i blacked out when we try to go to his concert like 
that's the only time in eight plus years of whiskey riff that we completely blacked out before the like like the artist went out we had him on the podcast it, okay cool okay. It, and then it's just, it was it was just, and then we just woke up i was like Wes, are you okay? like we we're just like are you okay are you okay it's like i didn't even see the show but uh, he's I mean, the nice the nicest guy like he is generous and, he, uh, and the thing about co that i really respect about him is he's not going to do anything he doesn't want to do he's not going to do anything he doesn't believe in you know so i knew that if this was a song that he believed in and something that he wanted to do, I think that would speak a lot to, you know, his fans and like people that like Co. Cause they're like, all right, well, he's not going to do something he doesn't want to do. And I really do. I did believe in the song and still do. And I mean, it's doing, it's cool. I, last night I saw him, I was like, we're on the radio. <laughs> and he's like, let's I, go. You, you know, already got like two and a half on Spotify, at least two and a half million streams or so. I think I just saw. So it's crushing it. Yeah, it's doing. I've, this is definitely my best single by far, and I'm um, super grateful for him to be on it. And then um, what's exciting too is I think, uh, and I knew this was gonna, this was gonna happen a little bit. And I think everyone's thinking I'm leaning a lot towards the Texas punk rock scene, you know. And I think that song is, I mean, it makes sense with Co. But there are so many different layers to what I do as an artist, and I really that's why with this first EP, I was very when we were picking all the songs and. <clears throat> out of so many and I wanted to show every layer a little bit from this from the jump you know what I mean I want to sh I want to do I want to because that's the type of artist I am I'm I do that live you know there's I do a couple different sounds but it's all cohesive in a way and it's it's almost hard to explain unless you hear it you know that's why I'm excited to have it out and um I don't know I'm excited to uh there's, there's you know there's like there's some straight up country songs on there there's the last two songs on it are just acoustic um the last the, on every body of work I put out from this one to for till forever um I want to put acoustic songs at the end just me and an acoustic or Ilya one of the guys played acoustic but just me and my vocal and an acoustic guitar and maybe some harmony you know that's I think songs that are lyrically my favorite that I wrote of the year that deserve just that you know and and if people are obsessed with them then we'll cut them full band you know and um mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of different layers to this ep it's eight songs i'm excited for uh to just for to get it out there i've waited a minute to put to really put music out you know put out a couple singles and kind of put out a little bit at a time but i've really been patient with it and um i wanted to make sure i had the right songs and i knew what i wanted to say before i started saying it um because I think that's really important. And I'm just so confident in that and this EP and that, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. This is something that I will forever be proud of this body of work. And that's, you know, Chris Stapleton, I watched a podcast he did with uh, Joe Rogan. And I think about this. Awesome, and uh, he said something and Joe was like, if you could give any young artists or songwriters a piece of advice. And he was like, songwriters especially that are also artists he's like you know you're gonna if imagine if this song blows up you're gonna have to sing a song for the rest of your life is this a song you want to sing for the rest of your life you know and that is something that has stuck with me through writing and you know deciding on what songs I want to put out and I feel like if I can just always put out songs that I believe in and I'm proud of you know then that that's that I'm done my job I've done what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do you know and the rest is just just hoping, you know, hoping that people mm -hmm. connect to it and relate to it. Awesome. So that comes that comes out May nineteenth, correct? Yep. Um, awesome. Before we let you go, we did have a couple of fan questions here. What we covered one of them with Poe. Um, you have a favorite song on the project, and then if you had to pick like one artist that was your biggest influence, um, do you have one? Um, I think my hard to pick a favorite but um I think the song that means the most to me is this song called could have been her um it is just such a special song it's a song that got me through a really tough time just from writing it and then listening to it and um I think it's a song that will be hopefully a song for somebody else that needs to hear it it's one of those kind of songs I'm really excited for that to come out um so probably that one but there's so many on there that I don't, it's hard, it's hard to pick, but I, yeah, I, I know it's a, it's a tough question. It's like, what's your, who's your favorite kid? Yeah. Uh, like if you have kids, it's like, uh, they're all, they're all great. I don't know. They're, I mean, I think so. I mean, I'm proud of them. You know, I'm proud of me and my co-writers and my producer and everyone that's worked so hard. And as far as influences, 
I don't know if there's one specific one. I feel like it'd be a few, like, you know, Hank Williams, Stevie Nicks was a big one for me. My mom bought me like every Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks vinyl she could find the first time she got me a record player. Just the way like her lyrics are and just how honest she is about things. And I mean, God, she was making the guy that she was writing the songs about singing with her on stage. Like, come on, that's more so badass. I mean, I, there's just, it, there, I mean, I think right now for me too, someone that is, Currently, is someone that I look up to a lot is um, is Lainey. I mean, we just did. Yeah, some she's together. awesome. She's just somebody that is it, it, all she does is work her ass off, you know. And no, uh, and she's been here for so long and has 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 never let off the gas. And I feel like you know, every time I get a little bit down, you know, I'm like, she if she can do that, I got it too, you know. Yeah, and for as far as podcasting, people always ask like, who's your favorite podcast guest? This or that? It's like he's up there. Like she was. You know, it was similar, like a Thursday at two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever. And there's a clip of it somewhere we posted. She thought she saw like a beaver in her backyard. And it was like, and then she's like, you know what? I need some bourbon. And it's like two o'clock. She goes and grabs a bottle and then like starts having a drink with us. Like I, yeah. And I was like, he's so like relatable and real. And then obviously she's since then, it's even gotten crazier with yellow on this stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. So I definitely see that similarity in a sense of like, when I listen to, or kind of just, even just kind of from zooming out. I think out, it's not I, even the music. I think it's more of how she approaches her career. You know, I think it's. Uh, there's like an energy that there's I an see energy, that's a there's similar. This, similar. Uh, there's this take no shit, but be respectful energy. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, and grateful is one thing. And uh, I feel like if I can keep doing those three things, then I can stay in this as long as I want to, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you try to kick me out, but I'm just going to keep coming back. You know, <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, we're going to keep posting your, your music and I appreciate uh, you guys. Too, and, a lot. Um, Thank you for all the special we'll, videos, man. Those were just like, you don't even, I remember my mom was texting me like, did you say this? And I was like, that's oh awesome. My God. I always, uh, that's fun when we hear that. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can meet you soon for a Up to. in person. Um, but glad you met one of our, team members last night and uh oh wait can you six oh so you know ahead. that picture that i took a long time ago i had a puppy and it was like in the um the blue shirt oh the chattahoochee there we go so we have to have one famous person come in here at least he's bigger now but oh you see wow. can you see my dog sleeping on the couch yeah right here? i can <laughs> <laughs> i got those oh. ears they almost like you permed his ears or her is it a he or him, she him his name's crew him. like motley crew with the two dogs i actually crew. named my touring company crew touring <laughs> so it's like uh, uh i walked um i was i had a little dog walking business in college that i started on my own and i walked a similar looking what what's the is it a full breed yeah boy can anything spaniel. or is it okay spaniels yeah i had a what kind of spaniel did i have it was it was white with like really light brown spots so yeah, a little different a did, did, i think that's a springer didn't spring. get that big springer yeah yeah yeah. yeah. didn't yeah. get that big though um but those ears look like they're permed that's amazing they're pretty awesome they're my, really my wife lucky. would go crazy because we have like a german shepherd mix yeah and he's got the ears my wife is just like always like playing with the ears that's right. i got a short i got a short this shit. he just doesn't care he's been on the road doing shows forever he just he's just you know what's funny you mentioned that photo i was like wait there's a famous famous like there's like a famous photo that she took for us and i and i wasn't connecting it wasn't that yeah that was the one yeah, it, was the, the blue, 20. it was like the one of the bigger oh, it, on the website i was so excited me and my puppy on there well, it was, was like, a great pick yeah whoa. i mean and that, right that in front we, of a field of green we, we love doing that presidential ticket things and it was like chatta hoochie like made no sense but we yeah. did it anyway uh, and then the, your pick helped us so yeah, we'll definitely send you more merch though. We'll, I'll talk to Shelby who you met and we'll send you a bunch of crap and Please not do. crap, good work. stuff. Good stuff. Well, <laughs> dude, I appreciate y'all so much, seriously. And all you've done for me so far. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you for sharing when we post a lot of artists, like sometimes forget that's a uh, nice when Hopeful. they should, they share. <laughs> hey, I, I try to wear as much as I can. I'm always needing something to wear on stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, have a great weekend. And it was awesome meeting you. Like we said, like I said, and, Seeing to support the music and you decided for i guess i don't know when this is going to come out with but it's going to be probably around next week around right around the time so Sweet. awesome
exciting. Well, thank y'all. Thanks for having me. Yeah. On here.